right. So I'm going to call the meeting to order. We have a quorum. And uh, we're going to start out with our approval of our consent agenda. Did everyone receive copies of minutes of our 315 2022 regular city council meeting? Yes, sir. Were there any questions, corrections, comments regarding those minutes? Uh, did you receive copies of the vouchers totaling $281,319.46? Were there any questions regarding the vouchers? Also on our consent agenda is a purchase order for Middle Creek Mining for South Ash Covert. $18,900, did you all receive a copy of that? Okay, any questions regarding the PO for Middle Creek Mining? Hearing none, I'd accept a motion to approve the consent agenda as submitted. Make a motion. Councilman Second. McCarty moves, Councilman Lowen seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed, motion carries. That takes us to our first public comment opportunity. Uh, we do have some members of the public, but I think most of the people in the room are on the agenda. In other areas, is there anybody online that would like to uh, comment? Rod or Karen, it looks like we have two. Okay. If you'd like to comment, just unmute and uh, identify yourself and make your comment. Hi, um, I'm Karen Freihover and I live at 210 Elm Street. I had talked with the city administrator about trying to change that to South Elm. Um, my disability payments, the US government, when it's not designated <clears throat> a North or a South, um, it automatically defers to a North. And so it's kind of messing things up. So I don't know. I talked to the post office and they said that the city council deals with addresses. So yeah, the city does assign the addresses to it, but I, I had followed up on this and I, the post of mass, well, the postmaster, I guess, Kathy, um, had indicated that they had got this corrected. So is it still happening, Karen? Um, well, when I type my address in, it just depends. Sometimes it comes out South Elm, sometimes it comes out, like the last time I asked the post office, they didn't know. Okay. They said that nothing had been changed in their system. So okay. if anything has happened since then, then I think that was maybe a week or so I'll ago. I'll follow up on that again. Okay. okay. Grand, Grand is the, is the uh, delineator of North and South, correct? Yeah. There's and an if issue. the street doesn't go North of Grand, is it not identified? It doesn't the usually get identified. The issue is that we have uh, identified Elm Street twice in, in the system. And so the houses on the north side, there's only about a block and a half that's Elm Street. And so that's where the confusion has been with the post office. Um, they indicated that they had fixed this issue, but evidently not if Karen's still having an issue with it. Um, yeah, the, the alternative would be to, to change all the addresses on those streets, which gets a little bit uh, messy, uh, but we can figure out some solution here. Well, if you'd please look into yeah, it we'll and report back at our next meeting. Thank you. Thank you, Karen. Appreciate you being online today. Is there any other public comment? Hearing none. Uh, we'll move into uh, our next item on the agenda, and we have a guest. We have Tracy Lowe from the Marion County CORE community, and she's going to talk to us about CORE and their activities and the things that they do to help people in Marion County. Thank you. How is everybody today? Yeah. So I came here about a year ago. I think some of you were still here. I was brand new to CORE at the time. And it's a year later, and I'm now the director of CORE at Marion County. So um, I know a lot more about it than when I came in the first time. So is there anybody here who doesn't know who CORE Community is? Okay, do you, did you know about circles? I don't think Circles so. in Marion County, because we replace circles. Um, what we are, we're a program in Marion County working to end poverty in Marion County. 
Um, we also work in 14 other counties in Kansas um, and, we're, and we're expanding every day. So we meet, our class meets here in Hillsboro on Thursday nights over here at Trinity Mennonite Church. Um, but we do serve the entire county. I did bring some brochures for everyone and in here is some specific information on poverty in Marion County. And on the back, you can find all of my contact information. Um, but what, what we're looking for right now, because we are looking for some things, we're looking for some families that need core community. And people who are living in poverty are faced with a lot of shame. When we're walking around looking for these families, they're not raising their hand and saying, ooh, me, 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 because you know, our population as a whole puts a lot of shame on people in poverty. So they're hard for us to find. And so we reach out to the community, to churches, to businesses, to individual people to say, do you know a family that's having a hard time, struggling to pay their bills, struggling to keep their house in good repair, struggling to buy food for their family? Because if you know those families, we can help them. And we ask that you contact one of us and try to try to help us set up a meeting with the family so we can talk to them about our program. So why is core community important to people who aren't in poverty? It's important to all of us because as we, as we end poverty in our community, we improve the quality of the community for everyone. We imp improve tax revenue. We have people getting gainful and better employment. We have families buying homes that weren't buying homes before and contributing to their communities in ways that they were never able to before. So it creates a lot, a lot of good for the community as a whole. Um, in Marion County, I know with COVID, everybody's receiving free, free lunch at school, but without COVID, 41.5% um, of our kids in Marion County were receiving free, free and reduced lunch. That's a lot of kids. Um, we have a 10.9% poverty rate in Marion County, Kansas. 10%, so that's one in 10 families. I mean, someone you know is in poverty. And 13.4% um, of those families are below the 100% level of poverty. So they're like in super poverty. So when people come to our program, we, we start with, we have our first class, which we call Getting Ahead. It's a 20-week class, which is kind of an introduction for them. And we touch very lightly on, on a number of subjects over a 20-week period. And um, when they graduate from Getting Ahead, they move into what we call our Phase 2 programming. Families can stay in Phase 2 with us anywhere from a year to 10 years if they want. But we do find that I mean, we don't ever kick them out. In fact, some of them are going to end up going to work for us out of poverty. But um, we flip, our research shows it takes three to five years to walk a family out of poverty. It doesn't happen overnight. It's a slow and messy, messy thing. Um, our budget here in Marion County to keep this project going is $54,000 a year. And all of that comes from donations and grant money. So... If you haven't had me knocking on your door looking for a donation, you probably eventually will one day. Um, if you don't wanna make me knock, again, my contact information is in here. Um, we are a, non a, a nonprofit, so any donations made to us are fully tax deductible. Um, so what else am I looking for? I'm looking for volunteers. I'm looking for people to come make a, make a meal. We serve a meal every Thursday night to the whole family. And we provide them with free child care while their parents go to class. Um, in phase two program. Um, we do work on budgeting. We do a class called Job Lingo to learn how to write a resume and have to do an interview. Um, and numerous, numerous other topics. The other thing that people don't always know or realize is in our phase two class, those are open to the entire community. You do not have to be in poverty or part of our program to attend those. 
So if we're posting on our Facebook page about some topic coming up and that's interesting to you or someone in your family, all you got to do is give us a call and say, hey, I want to come to that class. You can come down, join us for dinner and, and go to that class, whether it's one week, 12 weeks, however long it is. So that benefits the whole community as well. Anybody have any questions about core community? I think Phyllis. Phyllis raised your hand. Phyllis, do you have a question? Maybe. Can't hear you, Phyllis, if you're on. Yeah. Not getting anything from it. We have people online who won't be getting one of these tonight. Would it be all right if I just told them what my phone number is? Sure. Absolutely. So if you're not going to pick up a brochure and you want to call me, my phone number is 720-971-7133. And my email is Tracy, T R A C Y K dot Marion Core at gmail dot com. And um, can I just leave you something? <clears> please. You? Yeah, please. Does anybody else have any Thank questions you. they want to ask? Do you connect with the, um, the schools and with the? We do connect with the schools. We do a lot of work with the schools. Um, I've been working on forming a partnership with. Um, <coughs> All the schools here in Hillsborough and Marion County, mm -hmm. as well as parents and parents and mm -hmm. parents as teachers, fact, and um, Main Street Ministries here in Hillsborough. Okay. Because the are we what I find is our schools, they know who these families are too, that yeah, help, just as our churches do, and just as people in our neighborhoods do. You know, they know who, who they are. Mm -hmm. And you know, they, they're leery of us. They're like, I don't know what these people want from us. Well, all we want is to help them have a better life and then help Marion County be, be a stronger, stronger, more for everyone, not just some people that are doing well. Something that I found interesting at, at our meeting last week, which is their uh, community assessment, and I've been privileged to attend that the last two years when they do a kind of an assessment of of what's available, what services are available or not available in our communities. And, and so they, Tracy invites governmental and, and other constituencies to, to that meeting to talk about those things. But one of the things that I learned is what is the number uh, in terms of income for a family of four, family with four children, what's the number they need to, to, to be making annually to be out of, considered out of poverty? So what we consider out of poverty is their income level is 200% above the poverty level, okay? So for a family of four, that's $54,000 a year. And that's nationwide. So here in Marion County, $54,000 a year still can be fairly tight for a family of four, but it's, it is a livable amount uh, I moved here from Denver two years ago. At fifty-four thousand dollars, you would still be impoverished in Denver, Colorado, and many other places in our country. And that, like I said, that's a federal poverty level, so that's everywhere. Um, we talked about too because somebody brought up at that assessment. Well, how many jobs in Marion County pay fifty-four thousand dollars a year? Not a lot of them. But if you have two wage earners in your family. You know, you can probably have two wage earners. Maybe someone earns thirty thousand a year, and someone earns twenty-five thousand dollars a year. And then that family of four is now at two hundred percent above the poverty level. We've had families come into our program that are earning seven or eight thousand dollars a year and trying to live with a family of two to four people. So, if you have both parents working, what what what's the next thing that they need? Well, the next thing that they need is childcare. And I think everybody here knows childcare is an issue, not only in Hillsborough, but in all of Marion County. Just as housing is an issue here in Hillsborough and all of Marion County, especially low income housing. But even if you're not low income, again, I moved here two years ago. We, we had a heck of a time finding a house to buy. And um, we did end up finding exactly what we were looking for, but it was, it was a blessing that that happened because there was nothing. I know periodically there's nothing on the market in Marion County. And so then if you can't afford to buy a home, you're looking to rent, well, guess what? Most, most homes in Marion County are owner occupied. And the ones that are rentals are rented because there's not enough of them. 
So these families, you know, often are facing homelessness or two or three or four families are packed into a little house trying to keep shelter for their families, keep food on the table. Our food banks are very busy here in Marion County. I volunteer at two of them every month. It's an amazing amount of people that come through there every time. We so, don't always like to like to, to look for it or, or think about it, but uh, it's right here. You know, those problems are not somewhere else. They're not so in the inner city. Here's a couple success stories. I'm telling you the doom and gloom here. Let me tell you a little bit of the success for poor communities. I have a family in my program. <clears throat> you didn't meet her because she wasn't there the other night, but she attended a training in um, <clears throat> Hutchinson with me today, a poor community training. Um, she's been with the program for three years. She came in homeless with four children. And um, two years ago, she bought a house in um, Durham. So she's a homeowner. She is still under 200% of the poverty level. So we can't actually consider her out of poverty, but she's not homeless. She owns a home. She's able to feed her kids. And she actually applied for a job in poor community because that's another thing we bring is jobs into the community. And as we grow, we have more opportunities for jobs too. Um, we're gonna, our, our plan that we learned today, we're gonna add 20 more communities over the next four years. Wow. And um, we even have interest. We have one core community in Illinois right now. We have interest now for a core community outside of Milwaukee. <laughs> so we're, we're expanding nationwide. We are the most um, successful poverty program in the United States. <laughs> and we're not looking to put a bandaid on poverty, we're looking to solve poverty. So we're, we're doing a lot of hard, messy work. These families are messy <laughs> and, and it's hard work and it's frustrating. It's hard for them, it's hard for us. And when they stick with us though, magic happens. We have another family out of Augusta, a poor community in Augusta. Um, this family is at 250% poverty level now with income. They're still part of our program. And this, this leader was just took an, I'm sorry, I just took a position on the executive board for Youth Corps Ministries, which is our parent organization. So she's now on the executive board of this whole nonprofit organization, which is a paid position. So, you know, success is happening and it's happening all the time. Right here under the nose. And like I said, we meet right here in Hillsboro. We do serve the whole county. Transportation is another problem we have because this is a big county. And I know that because I live as far away from Hillsborough as you can and still live in Marion County. <laughs> it takes me 45 minutes to drive from my house uh -huh. to here. Wow. Which is why if you were here when I came in, I said I didn't even go home. I stopped and had dinner because I came in from Hutch. And if I'd have gone home, I'd have gone home just to turn around and come back. So I hung out I hung out here tonight. But it's a big county when people don't have, and people in poverty don't always have transportation or good transportation. So we're looking at how can we get them into our program if they live in Burns or Florence or Durham or Lehigh. Because, you know, again, these places aren't real far if you have a car, but what if you don't? You know, if you live 45 minutes from here and you don't have a car, it might as well be the other side of the world. Um, we do have a church here in Hillsboro that's talking to us about allowing us to use their van for transportation um, to help get people to our program. If we do move forward with that, that'll create yet another employment opportunity here in Hillsboro because we'll have to hire someone to drive that van. It'll only be a part-time job, but you know, if it supplements someone's income or maybe a retired person that just needs a little help with money, it's a great opportunity. Anyway, think about think about core community. We meet Thursday nights at five thirty at Trinity Mennonite Church, and anyone is welcome to join us to come in, have a meal with us, come check out our program, meet our families, meet our staff, get to know us a little bit. I need volunteers. We have um, we have a class graduating here. Getting a head class is going to graduate in two weeks, and we need what we call core friends for them. Um, and what a core friend is 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 a middle class person from the community that's going to form an intentional friendship with them. Um, and we have training in how to do that. Um, we don't expect you to solve their problems. We don't expect you to pay their bills. What we, what we ask you to do is become an intentional friend to help bridge that gap between poverty and middle class. Because imagine, if you will, 
that you won a half half billion dollar Powerball, and now you were among the very wealthy. Do we know how to behave in that class? We have no idea. <laughs> and we would feel very awkward now to place at those kind of events and galas, and we just wouldn't know how to function there. People coming out of poverty want to be middle class. They don't know how to function here. We speak a different language. We have different rules. We dress differently. We talk differently. And they, part of our program is forming these intentional friendships to help bridge that gap. Because if you're just hanging out with somebody and getting to know them, you also get to know their family, their friends. You do things together once in a while. And it, it helps you start to blend into another level. Um, I desperately need more friends. So I don't know if anybody in here wants to ever talk about that, but please call me if you do. It's, um, we ask for a minimum commitment of 18 months that you come to our program one time a month. So do one Thursday a month for 18 months. We do not require you to interact with that family or that person outside of the meetings, but we encourage it. So, you know, if you wanted to just call or text with your friend or have them over for dinner or go hunt and fish and whatever you like to do with them, that's encouraged but not required. But we do have core friend night the first Thursday of every month, and that's what we ask our friends to attend. Any other questions? It's important work, and we're glad you're doing it. Thank you, Tracy. Thank you. Oh, the other thing, too, is these meals that we serve every Thursday, those are donated to us. Sometimes by an organization like a city council. Hint, hint. Yeah. Um, many churches do these meals for us. Sometimes families do. Other businesses do. The Lions Club sometimes does. Um, and so if anybody wants to, you know, get together with a group or an individual and, and donate a meal to us, um, we'd love to have that as well. All right. Well, thank you for your time. And. Um, Unless anybody else has any questions, I'm going to make my long trip trek home because I've been out of the house for about 13 hours at this point. <laughs> but I appreciate your time, and I really hope that I hear from some of you, and I know we'll talk some more, and then I hope to have some support from Hillsboro here. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you. And I'll leave those extra flyers. Yep. Yeah, please. Okay. Uh, next item up on the agenda, we have... Uh, some other guests tonight, and we have Commissioners Kent Becker, Jonah Gehring, and our County Engineer Bryce Goble. And I understand you would like to, they would like to address the council. Yeah, pin it on Bryce. So we're gonna, Dave, we're gonna <laughs> step up to the podium. Yeah. And just and I, I believe we're bringing up that ball and told again here. There you mm -hmm. go. Well, that's kind of a tough act to follow. Uh, Paul and Tracy, a very nice program. Uh, she does bring up the issues of, uh, it's ironic, she brings up transportation, you know, trying to get from, she's got a 45 minute drive and, and uh, it's big county that takes a lot of needs. It's, it takes me an hour if I drive from corner to corner. And it's just, it's, it's amazing. But uh, what I want to talk to you about tonight is <clears throat> the uh, a cost share program that we have uh, worked in with KDOT. Uh, KDOT has many, many programs that uh, allow us to access state and federal money uh, for projects. Um, so what we do is we try to find a project in the several hundred thousand to several million dollar range uh, and apply for some sort of a cost share. We also have bridge programs and things like that. Uh, but what I would like to talk to you tonight is the cost share that we have submitted for Indigo Road, uh, which will basically be um, at the uh, co-op flat storage building, that's Kanza. Um, what we're looking to do is rebuild about two tenths of a mile north. Did I say something? No, I just, okay. you said Indigo and then. I'm sorry, Kansas. 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 Okay. Too many projects. Kansas, right? Yeah. Okay. Kansas. Indigo's yeah. on the list too. Yes, yes, yes. <laughs> yeah. So, yeah. But, yeah. But, um, sorry but, about that. <laughs> but anyway, it's Kansas. I'm sorry. Um, we want to reconstruct about two tenths of a mile north of that intersection. And then south, about 1.8 miles, um, just south of the uh, fertilizer plant. That area is in tremendous distress uh, due to the amount of trucks and the heavy trucks going through there. And so we've been trying to figure out um, what we can do to fix that. Well, we've also been trying several other roads and we've been successful on some. But anyway, this fits the, the program that they're looking at now um, uh, quite nicely. 
With that stretch of road, obviously the first half mile south of uh, 56 on the east side of the road is actually, west, yes, the other east, west side of the road is actually city property. So um, we've, we've submitted this project basically um, for the county's purposes, but I guess what we're asking is for the city of Hillsboro um, to obviously offer support, um, not only from the um, public relations size, but also um, in the financial aspect. Um, we realize that you guys face the same issues that we do as far as money, um, but we also want to make sure that you guys are um, behind us on this, uh, for this. Um, we, this project is also unique in the fact is that uh, due to the heavy truck traffic, it's actually a very, very good candidate for concrete pavement instead of the asphalt pavement. And that's also very beneficial because right now with the price of fuel, asphalt's the same way. Asphalt cement has doubled in the last several months. And so the price of uh, the hot mix asphalt is through the roof. So it, it helps us immensely if we go back with concrete pavement, your life cycle costs will probably be in the 20 to 30, range, 20 to 30 year range um, compared to asphalt in the 10 to 15. So anyway, uh, the project we submitted with the latest cost estimates was about two and a half million. And so again, with the financial situation that everybody has, um, I guess we're just asking for what you guys could do to help. Uh, because obviously the, the city does get the benefit of that first half mile uh, on the west side. Um, again, this is just a uh, project we have. We have not heard back from KDOT, um, but um, they have a million dollar maximum out of it. So the county or the, the other parts other than the, the KDOT maximum would be um, 1.5 million. Now, there may be some other costs on, on top of that because we're responsible for design and inspection costs, um, but I can handle most of those through my office uh, with maybe a little bit of, of consulting work, whatever else, surveying and things like that. Um, so like I said, it's, that's kind of a big issue. But again, we look at the uh, amount of traffic that goes in and out of there for both of those. Um, and obviously, we, we need to do something with that payment. So... Um, I guess I go with that. Uh, I will tell you, we've talked about since I brought up Indigo, we are also looking to overlay Indigo uh, south of Hillsboro um, with the condition that um, in the last two months, um, it's probably gone up over a quarter of a million dollars just for us to do that, assuming that we can get it done yet this year. That's the other thing we're facing is talking to contractors is um, they... Um, they can't even do it this year. Um, they're actually bidding projects this year to have liquidated damages in them for next year that can be completed. They're facing the same issues as anybody else trying to find labor. Um, even, even local contractors are facing that, let alone the ones that travel for a living. So we're, we're facing that issue on Indigo as well. We're looking at other alternatives just to try to, to hold it together until we can come up with something else because it's, it's in pretty rough shape. That uh, Indigo Road is the highest um, um, road we have for traffic. It runs about 1,500 vehicles a day, depending on where you are, especially uh, down to the 150th or the 120th that goes over to Gossel. Um, that's, a, that's a huge commuter way both ways. Um, so anyway, we're working on that. Um, uh, so... Like I said, that's what we're looking at now is if we've got a contract, we may or may not get it done this year, but we're really looking to do something this year because we'll have to go back and do some extensive patching. Um, so uh, I've given, I sent this uh, cost share thing to Matt, so I don't know whether you had submitted it to the council members or whatever else. No, I, I never got anything. You never got it? I never got anything from okay. you. We had a conversation on the phone, but yep. I've never gotten any. Okay. I will follow up that because I know I sent it to you. It must be okay. after an email it heaven be. somewhere, but um, <laughs> we can, we can definitely give it to you. With, with communication, that's like everything sure. else. Sure. Um, but anyway, uh, the other thing is I'm always uh, available to answer any questions or if you have any thoughts or whatever else, um, I'm, I'm always available to, to visit with the local municipalities, whatever else, and, and people out in the, in the field as well. So um, what I guess uh, kind of what we're looking to do is on this project is, no, the other thing was if we go with concrete, 
it's actually beneficial to us as well because we can actually do the project uh, later in the year and earlier next year if that's the case. Uh, asphalt plants typically shut down November 1st, November 15th, and typically don't start back up till April. We can produce concrete uh, all through the winter time. You just have to use a special consideration not to let it freeze, as well as the base and things like that. Uh, Marion County, we're looking to supply the, the base material as well. Um, so we have we have a lot of things that we can do cost cutting that will help. Uh, but like I said, that's concrete. Uh, I have talked with both the uh, ag service as well as the co-op. Uh, they're behind it 110 um, percent to whatever they can to help out as well. So anyway, any questions about Kansas Indigo? Anything else? Refer to the two commissioners. I'll just get. Yeah. I'm definitely uh, available if you have any questions now or in the future. So, any questions for Mr. Gold from the council? Okay. Thank, Thank you, you very much. Yep. Thank you. I might just add, we are looking over the next couple of years of, of some major improvements that will impact Hillsboro immensely. When you look, when you look at Indigo and the traffic flow out out of Hillsboro, and then in the with the ag community out here on Kansas. So, uh, you know, we're, we're probably looking at bonding a project so we can get it done. We're also touching on <clears throat> a little bit, we've discussed 190th out toward to Kansas, out to Marion. So um, that trying to preserve that one, maybe with a cost-effective method. So there's a lot of a lot of places that the county is looking at getting right up close to Hillsboro and making some much needed repairs. How many miles of county road are there? Just <laughs> too many. <laughs> yeah, I, I know that. But <laughs> we we uh, we have about 180 miles of asphalt. Okay. We have 800 miles of rock, and we have 600 miles of dirt. Okay. So total almost 1,600 miles. 1600 miles. Yeah. So. Um, and, and something. Yes. And that that depends on where it's at because the most important road is the one that goes right in front of somebody's house. Well, sure. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, we play that game too. We understand <laughs> yep. how that goes. Yeah. Yep. 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 So, so based on our county population, everybody's got a little over a mile to take care of each person, man, woman, child. Yep. County. Yep. 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 So. That's why we want to make our, our communities as attractive as we can so we can get more inflow. Well, yeah, we understand that, you know. Yeah. I, I would also like to say that uh, working with Dale over here has been very, very good. Uh, we've contacted each other numerous times, so I do appreciate that we have that communication. I want to try to work with, with everybody as we can, so both ways. Appreciate that. Yep. Thank you. Any other questions? Okay. Speaking of Mr. Dalkey, um, <laughs> next item up is uh, department head annual report. And we have Mr. Dale Dalkey, our street superintendent. I guess you guys got my uh, report already. I, yeah. I didn't know if Matt sent it out or not. But, yeah. um, so I was planning on pretty much reading what I had wrote down and I guess that's what I'll do, but feel free to ask questions in the middle or at the end or however you feel. Yeah. I don't have a PowerPoint. I was going to do that, but my computer doesn't have that program and my kids were busy recently. <laughs> <laughs> so they weren't able to help. Um, so I'm Dale Dalkey and I'm the city um, street department superintendent. Started in May of 2007. Um, felt like when I started, I didn't have really a predecessor to follow. John Niner had been retired for a few years. Martin Rhodes had more of a building maintenance crew than a street department. Um, that was just kind of his nature. But so I like the idea of coming into a blank, sl blank slate. Um, I mean, literally, I showed up for work and there was a couple guys in the department. And I was like, what do you guys normally do? You know, and they kind of had to show me a little bit of what they did, which was a lot of building maintenance. And so we, we got off to a good start and uh, things have come a long ways. Um, I feel, um, I don't want to say I do everything right because I don't, but uh, um, there's a lot of 
a lot of improvements that have happened, but there's a lot of maintenance to keep up with the deterioration development and other needed improvements. Um, I have a very good crew right now, talented guys to work with at the street department, Matt Hine of eight years, Darren Luther of four years, and Jesse Dirks of one year. Uh, these guys can do anything that's asked of them. Um, they work diligently and safely. Um, currently looking to hire someone, but as you all know, that's hard to do nowadays. Um, over, the, over the years, whenever I've been looking to hire someone, I've had many people say to me that it should be easy to hire someone because all I need is a warm body and someone to fill the seat. <laughs> um, I believe what we do as a street department Seen a lot of retirement within the city staff. Frankly, that'd be kind of scary. Um, I really feel like we've come through that transition very well and we've gained some talented people through this. Um, we have a lot to be thankful for in that regard. I'm not, not really so much with my department, we didn't have retirement, but just as a city as a whole, and we've come through that well. Um, some of the tax, tasks we're responsible for are street repair, obviously, alley grading, sidewalk repair and replacement, managing the city burn site. Uh, this, managing the city compost facility, mowing city property and Highway 56 right away, airport runway and building maintenance, sweeping streets, snow and ice removal, setting up election voting booths, trimming trees in the alleys, maintaining drainage systems, building and equipment maintenance, park maintenance. And we assist every department there is in some way, especially during emergency repairs. Um, we also cover the trash truck um, in David Lockwood's absence or run a second truck during holidays and other needed times. Uh, we haven't been able to reconstruct an entire block length of city streets um, by ourselves, but we've um, talked about doing that in the future, having a, a you know a major project just with our city crew. Um, we haven't quite picked out how we're going to do that or where we're going to do that, but I see that coming around the corner at some point. We have been able to repair our streets with concrete replacement patching and some other curb replacement. We really recently bought a rotary curb machine to assist us to pouring longer stretches of curb. We have poured a few block lengths of sidewalks to replace the broken and narrow ones. Um, with asphalt streets, I struggle with uh, some of those in town. It seems like when we go to patch asphalt streets, our motto is we know where to start, but we don't know where to stop. Um, I mean, that's literally almost every occasion because you just don't know where the end is. Um, the question seems to be how much money do we invest in a bad street? You know, the street should really be removed or replaced, but we end up patching it. Um, for a while, hopefully. I like to say keep the good roads good, which means a street can become too far gone and it shouldn't have any more money thrown in at it, but we end up patching it to make it good enough uh, rather than just rebuilding it right away. And it, it boils down to money. Um, that's just how things are. Uh, we used, <clears throat> the last two summers we spent um, several weeks digging out soft spots up to a foot deep, sometimes even a little bit more in the roads around town, 20 to 80 feet long, and then filling it back up with compacted crushed concrete, topping it off with hot or cold mix asphalt. Um, where we've done this, we seem to have fixed the problem, but wherever we stopped, now it's getting soft and broken up. One I just saw the other day was uh, D and Wilson, just south of D on Wilson on the west side of the road. There's just, uh, I don't know, big old blown out spot in the street now, on the near the edge of the street from the trash truck. And I'm not. There's some donkeys living there, right? Yeah, one right around the right <laughs> next door. And you know, I mean, I'm not blaming the trash truck, even though he did that, but um, it's just it's just the way it is. <laughs> it's a big, heavy truck. It's what a do you heavy truck, do? right. I mean, that, um, I kind of explained that in here, but the, the trash truck is heavier, especially on the front end, and he does a lot of turning, and they're probably stopping, and he drives down the edge of the road, which is typically softer than the center of the road. Um, it's just the nature of, of how it works with the trash truck. So. In our old streets, there was really no base under the asphalt. They just crowned up some dirt, uh, the topsoil or clay or whatever it was, put asphalt on it, and once the moisture gets under it, it's done. Um, the, the clay can swell up, get soft, and, and that's it, really. Uh, we need to be chip sealing them, and we do occasionally. Um, any given asphalt street should be chip sealed about every six years. Some towns do it every three to five. Uh, some of our asphalt streets haven't been chip sealed for 12 years. Um, 2020 is the last time we chip sealed. We had a large project to overlay and chip seal some of the streets. And that project went really well. Um, it kind of built up the crown and then we, we chip sealed them right away to seal the new asphalt. 
Um, we did not chip seal last summer and I don't plan on chip sealing this summer. We looked into it, but um, sometimes we like to have a little bit bigger project than just smaller projects each year because you have mobile mob costs for the contractor. And so sometimes we will hold back a couple of years and then chip seal uh, in one year rather than every year. But so um, special highway money is what we usually use for chip sealing. Um, frankly, that doesn't go as far as what we need to. Um, I hope as a city we can chip in some of our own matching dollars to get um, chip sealing done in a suitable chip seal rotation. Um, we've made large strides in the last 10 years with some of the old asphalt streets being replaced with concrete streets, which require less maintenance. Concrete has a lot larger investment initially, but less maintenance and longer life expectancy. I get quite a few compliments from visitors that say we have nice streets, and that says a lot. We have identified a few streets of immediate need of replacement. I hope we can get those taken care of soon. Our town has many blocks of sidewalks that are broken and have trip hazards. I would like to see sidewalk improvements on the partially on the homeowner's behalf by encouragement to participate in our cost share sidewalk program. Um, some people take advantage of that, but a lot of people don't know about it. We need to maybe publicize that a little bit. Um, we replace some sidewalks um, as a city um, sometimes also. One thing that has made our community better is by what we do is started uh, accepting concrete rubble. If you're not part of construction world, you may not notice this. I've always had construction contractors contacting me and asking where they can get rid of broken concrete for work they're doing in town. So we started accepting and stockpiling concrete rubble. Um, this has benefited us in that we have a close place to dump our own concrete that when we remove concrete from our own projects, and utility repairs. A tremendous amount of money is saved by homeowners and business owners be having a local place to get rid of material rather than hauling it out of town. Once we have enough concrete stockpiled, we crush it into a product that we can use for base material under a new street or use for alley rock. Uh, with fuel prices, this saves us a lot of money um, for on trucking rather than hauling rock in from far away. Um, it's right here in town already. Uh, we're currently also selling this rock um, to offset a bit of the crushing cost. We're not going to sell it all necessarily, but a um, little bit here and there. Um, seems like every week we haul out a few loads um, for farmers or whoever wants to buy it around here. It's going over pretty well. A few can, projects we are currently working on or going to work on this year are South Ash, um, Willow Glen Culvert Installation Repair, um, the culvert's in, you saw the bill for it, um, and we're currently working on getting some concrete poured around the culvert, and uh, it's a bit of a challenge with the water table in that area. There's water where we need to pour concrete, so um, tomorrow we have some concrete scheduled for 10 o'clock if you want to check it out. Um, new sidewalk on D from Cedar to Birch next to Memorial Ball Field. This has been, uh, ever since I started here, getting that one put in because the pool was put out there with no sidewalks to it, and so we did this uh, maybe a third of it a couple years later, and then we did more recently, and this is kind of the last phase of getting the sidewalk all the way through the pool. And so it'll be nice. You see uh, young mothers with children pushing their strollers through the gravel of the fair fairgrounds, and it just, it don't work so good. So this sidewalk will be a great improvement for that area. Um, we also want to keep going with some road striping and crosswalk markings, and um, we've started that in the last year, and we just need to continue with um, some more of that. Um, leveling of the red bricks downtown with the addition of irrigation for flower planters, um, cleaning out of the muse museum ex excessive items. Um, we've helped with that some and have an auction coming up for some of that. Getting ready for the auction and building a splash pad and park area, as you're aware of, I'm sure. And I think the splash pad park will be a good project for us. Um, I think we can all use the city, the city workers' talents to put this thing together. I know we'll end up with a good and long-lasting product that the community can use and enjoy. I think it'll look good. Seems like I'm forever asking for equipment. You as a council may not hear some of these requests because they get filtered out because of money constraints, usually between conversations between Matt and I, and that's just <laughs> the chain of command. That's how it works, right? Um, I feel like we're always a little bit behind on replacing equipment. Oftentimes the equipment we trade in is of little value because of major faults or age. Um, we do have some really nice equipment too. We've gotten a loader, skip loader, skid loader, um, you know, some other smaller things that are newer and very nice. Um, so I appreciate that. Um, 
we do have a couple of talented guys, um, um, mechanics on staff that we do a lot of our own repairs when we can. I think it saves a lot of money, although it does take away from production in the field too. So we, we try to balance that out with uh, repairs. Um, I've always said that we're a big enough city to justify having some of our own equipment to perform our own work, but we aren't big enough to have just all the right equipment or all the equipment we wish we could have. Um, you know, we're kind of somewhere in that stuck in the middle, um, which is all right. We, that's what we know and what's what we deal with. Um, we're very innovative and sometimes make our own equipment or adapt another piece of equipment to fit our needs. Um, we love a good challenge. Right now we have a great need for a dump truck because we had an engine failure in one of our dump trucks. We also need to upgrade a pickup or two among other smaller items. Uh, the used excavator we talked about a few weeks ago that I wanted to purchase is postponed because of the expense of the backhoe that we're buying in the back trailer. Um, and that's just the way it goes. I have not purchased the enclosed job trailer we are looking for yet. I just haven't quite found the right one. and I've uh, been a little busy with other things, but we'll get that coming eventually. Um, and this sounds like a little bit of a crazy idea, but um, I've talked to some other communities and they, they've made it work on some equipment, but so uh, since we're a government, we get a government discount from dealers. We can buy at a discount, keep it for a certain number of hours or years, probably a couple of years and trade it in or trade it or sell it for roughly what we paid for it, probably a little less, but um, it might be a way for certain pieces of equipment to, we can keep up with newer pieces um, for those. And it's the difference between municipal pricing and, and then slightly used private market pricing. Um, our facilities are a bit cramped. We need more equipment storage. Um, we're currently using MPI for a lot of storage. And as we know, that building is leaky and somewhat coming down on itself. But um, the street and sanitation department share a shop. Um, we do a lot of the trash truck maintenance too. Um, when it comes to servicing and repairs. Um, David does some and we, we do some with him also. Um, our offices are a little tight. We've talked about adding under a shop, but um, haven't got too far on that. Maybe that'll come up in the future also. Um, we as a street, street department service the burn site. We spend roughly a couple hours there. Um, it can be frustrating to manage this because violators dump trash or lumber there, which is against KDHE rules. I do believe we'll have a nice, a nice all-weather site to dump tree branches for the city. It's, it's very well used um, for everybody within the city. Our compost site is a very busy place also that we manage. The site is busy with people dumping raw vegetation or taking composted material back home. This is also an all-weather site that serves the community well. Our finished compost is nearly gone because there's such demand for it at times. It's, too, it's hard also to manage this site because of unwanted trash that's dropped off at the site. Um, seems like the street department wears quite a few hats. Uh, we sometimes have the labor pool for the city for any kind of projects, which we don't mind. That's how it is. I feel like we have a long road to hoe when it comes to street work, but looking back through the years, we have accomplished a large number of product projects. And I personally have seen the street landscape um, have many improvements for the better. We have a good community with good people. I see a lot of good things happening around town. I remember in the not so distant past, crazy idea to use community volunteer labor to do, to lay bricks for two blocks of city streets. Looking back, wow, what a project. Um, seems like an unrealistic, but the uh, great volunteers that we had made it happen and it turned out very nice. Um, the brick project introduced one community member to another that hadn't met before and gave a sense of, I did that to the improvement of the street. <laughs> Another improvement to our community recently has been the addition of the trail. This gives walkers a dedicated path, changes scenery and a way to get exercise. I hope we can continue to expand the trail and have a loop around the whole town connecting the sports complex, Hillsborough Heights and Joel Wayne Stadium. Sidewalks seem to connect the community get together. There are many aspects of our city work that I could talk about, but I'll stop here. I would hope you as a council feel the freedom to talk with us about concerns you have with any aspects of city maintenance. We would love to have these conversations. We appreciate your willingness to hear our concerns and thank you for the opportunity to speak on the street department's behalf. Are there any questions or comments? Dale, I was gonna say, 
it's ironic you brought up some of the issues. One of the things we're looking at for a um, cost approach or whatever else, if you haven't, if you've heard of microsurfacing, um, we're, that's one of the projects we're looking at. Um, we can get, we're, we're talking in neighbor to $60,000 per mile for us, but they use that a lot in Wichita, Salina, things like that. It's obviously heavier than a seal course, but less expensive than the asphalt. So if we get that contractor here, we'll definitely let anybody know. So we could, it's like anything else, once once we get the contractor here, we can do that. Yeah, I think uh, certain streets that work well where you have a good base and a, a decent street. Yes. Yeah. yeah, where some of our asphalt streets are just it's, annihilated. Than yes. Yeah. And, and but yeah, for the right road, it, it yeah. can be a good. And, and we're facing you know. the same thing as well. Mm -hmm. The other thing is, uh, it actually was brought up at the commission meetings Monday, is we're, we're getting some new equipment. Um, and obviously, I understand the, the price of those. But we're going to be selling our old stuff, and typically we've gone to Purple Wave. Well, we actually were contacted by the city of Marion. Uh, we're going to get rid of our two motor graders. And so what we talked about was the commission basically decided is before we get rid of stuff on Purple Wave, we're going to contact the local, you know, the other towns, whatever else, to see if they're interested first. The benefit to that is if it doesn't go to Purple Wave, um, we, we'll set a price, I mean, approximately what whatever that negotiated price is. But if you don't go through Purple Wave, then the buyer does not have the 10% premium. Mm -hmm. So it saves you 10% as well as transportation costs. Mm -hmm. um, so anyway, we just thought that would be a way to try to help, you know, other, other entities out as well. So, uh, but anyway. Okay. So. Thank, you. Thank you. Tino is going to be reaching out to all the clerks of the, yeah. okay. so on that equipment. We, one thing we're looking at now is we're getting ready to sell a, a CAT 120H. It's one of our smaller units, but um, decent shape and everything else. So like you said, Tina will be contacting all the, Let's see, the clerks. Yeah. So um, Matt, did you get the cans of things? Yeah, I did. I found it in the filter and I sent it out to the <laughs> council. Um, okay. So got caught in the basket. Sorry but about obviously, that. Um, the other thing too is, uh, you know, I appreciate what you guys are trying to do, but if since there's something in the county we can help you with, you know, we're, we're here to help everybody, so. Any other questions? <clears throat> if we just had more money. That's right. And people. Yeah, we we'll take that too. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, keep up the good work. We yeah. do appreciate what you guys do. Okay. You're very report. valuable yep. members of our yeah. city team. Thank you. Yeah. It's a good report. Well, don't be strangers. Thank you. I just wanted to hear from you. <laughs> hey, we're now into our business items section of the agenda. Let us sit in with Yep. Thank you for coming. Um, first item up is a temporary permit for alcohol sales. For Golf Association at Scheffler House, Mr. Stiles. Thank you, sir. So this is uh, just following up with what we presented at the March 15th meeting. Um, they've gotten everything worked out. You've got a copy of their uh, permit that they've submitted to us. Uh, just kind of following up on some of the information there. Um, the Beer Garden is, is going to be a fundraiser for the Golf Association, and they are working with Three Rings Brewery out of McPherson on that. So... I think anybody who's familiar with that will be happy with that. Uh, um, they do have a CMB license. We figured out the issue with uh, insurance. They do have they're covered under the city's liability insurance because the Golf Association is a named insured for us um, because they obviously run a lot of events on the golf course, which is our public property. Um, so we think we got that all worked out. Um, you know, the, the museum property is probably the most interesting piece of this because it's not technically one of the properties that we normally would allow alcohol to be served on. And so if you're going to do this, you're also going to be granting them permission to do that. Um, and it's going to be for that one day, June 15th. Um, they have kind of a plan as to where they're going to contain everything. Um, and I, I, Dave Schrag from the Golf Association has been kind of working that uh, been really nice to work with on this project so i feel pretty feel pretty comfortable that they're going to do it in, in an appropriate way um i don't think bike across kansas people are a particularly rowdy group <laughs> um so i don't think it's going to be a huge deal as far as how the neighborhood's going to uh, react to that they also have permission from the lutheran church so that was another important piece um 
the Lutheran Church is actually going to be hosting the meal that night. So the Community Foundation is going to be preparing the meal in the Lutheran Church's uh, fellowship hall and then serving out of there. So they're 100 percent on board and um, willing to, to actually help if necessary. So and this is not a public deal. It's just for the bikers, correct? Well, I, theoretically, yeah, but I'm not real sure how you're going to keep people from the public out of that necessarily. So. Um, what we basically have asked for is them to show us how they're going to contain people. Oh, okay. um, I don't know that they can necessarily limit it to just the bikers participating or the staff. Or, hmm. There's a lot of unknowns there. So. That's the only complaint I had with some people from town said, how come we can't go? Well, I mean, sure. hey, maybe you could. I mean, I, that would be an option. Uh, I don't, there's not like a, a guest registration and a, a red velvet rope keeping people out. No, it's so. not going to be, I mean, it's not there for people to go and drink or something. Right, yeah. That's not going to be a party necessarily. Yeah, a party, yeah. Right. That's what we have to say, yeah. So if you're, uh, if you're willing to, to continue forward with this, you're comfortable with this, uh, your vote would be to grant them a temporary act, uh, temporary sale and serve or service of alcohol permit to the Golf Association for June 15th. And then also I'd ask that you authorize it to be held at the Scheffler House since it's kind of an unusual location. <clears throat> Any questions? Hearing none, would somebody like to make that motion? The count, Councilman McCarty moves, is there a second? Councilman By seconds. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Uh, ordinance 1346, establishing poll attachment fees. Mr. Stiles. Thank you, sir. This is a, obviously a, a fun piece of business here. Um, so we currently charge $1 per poll. Um, and we've actually had a little bit of trouble finding where that is in our code and our resolution. So uh, what we've done and what Andrew has developed here is an ordinance that establishes the poll attachment uh, fee and says that at $10 was what we discussed at the March 1st meeting. Uh, kind of the big thing there, I guess, is it's, it's kind of a minimal financial impact. I mean, it, it is an increase for Vibe is our number one customer as far as that goes. They have 663 <coughs> polls, or excuse me, 636 polls. So they'll go from $636 up to $6,360 uh, per year. So that's obviously a large increase, but um, when you look at kind of where we're at compared to everybody else, it's not that significant, truthfully. So, um, yeah. So if you're comfortable with this, then we're just uh, recommending you approve the ordinance as, as presented. Any questions? Hearing none, would somebody care to make that motion to approve Ordinance 1346, establishing poll attachment fees, and authorize the mayor to sign? I'll make that motion. Councilman Bayh. Moves, Councilman Lowen seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, we'll poll the council. Councilman Lowen? Yes. Councilman McCarty? No. Councilman uh, By? Yes. Okay. Motion is approved. Ordinance uh, 1346, uh, establishing poll attachment fees, is uh, approved by a vote <coughs> of two to one. Wait, wait, I'm sorry, I don't mean to interrupt. That's two to two to one with one member missing. Yeah. Yeah, it doesn't pass. An ordinance has to be passed by majority of the members elect, not those present. So we'd have to have three yeses for the ordinance to pass. Okay. okay. Well, I'll, I'll change my vote to yes. <laughs> okay. I don't want to go on. I mean, I'm not in favor because I think they're going to raise prices, but it's fine. Let's do it, get it done. Okay. So I'll change my vote. So do but, we need to read that? Yeah, no, we're going to re poll the council. <clears throat> okay, Councilman Lowen? Yes. Councilman McCarty? Yes, reluctantly. <laughs> <laughs> Councilman Bayh? Yes. Okay, we have a vote uh, three, uh, I, which is a majority of the council. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Thank you. I appreciate you bringing that up. Yeah. I'd hate to prove something and find out it wasn't really. I didn't know that either. That's glad you said so. Yeah. Now, so a simple kind of a voice title? vote. On a resolution or a motion, it can be a majority of those present, but an ordinance oh. must be majority of the total members, whether they are present or not. I guess I should have read this book. Huh? Yeah, there you go. That's in the <laughs> they probably have it right. <laughs> Maybe. Might have that correct. Okay. 
Fair enough. Well, thank you very much, Councilman McCarty. I appreciate it. Uh, we now have uh, item three, which is auction items, Mr. Stiles. Thank you, sir. So uh, Dale had mentioned in his report about the auction, and we've talked about it several different times here at the council level. Uh, so what we wanted to do is give you a list of everything, and I, I updated that and revised it and sent it out to you because we had a, the counts weren't on there for the museum stuff, and they actually ended up being a little bit more that came in for the museum stuff. Uh, we're looking at one of the last two weekends in April, but I'm having a hard time getting a hold of Lyle Lepke to give me the firm date. Um, so this is kind of the list of the things that we would like to do at the live auctions. You've got kind of a, a, just a, a laundry list of everything we've got, everything from hand tools to uh, we've got uh, taxidermy birds, which is fun. Uh, we've, we seem to be finding a lot of taxidermy animals at the museum. I'm not sure where they came from, and we can't find dissension records that show us where they came from in all cases. Uh, so it's you know, some, some interesting stuff. Uh, and then we've got, you know, the Island of Misfit Toys of Technology from the administration department, just sort of things that we've collected over the years we need to get rid of. So um, we're just asking that you take a look at that. And if there's anything in there that you feel like we shouldn't necessarily sell, we would uh, pull that out. Uh, we also have some of our larger equipment that we're gonna be moving forward to Purple Wave and you'll get a look at that once we get to that point. Pretty well close on that, but. So we're just seeking approval of, uh, of our proposed auction items, if that's something that you feel comfortable with. Is this, gonna, is this gonna be a problem for anybody that donated stuff, some of this stuff? Or? So what we've done is we've gone back, if we have records on it, we've tried to contact the people who donated it or the family. Uh, a lot of cases we can find family members. Um, and we've asked them if they want it back or what we should do with it. And if they've given it, if they don't want it back and they say yeah, it's fine to, to get rid of it, then we put it on the auction. Mm -hmm. but, uh, a lot of times there, there's some of these things we can't find if we don't have records for, right. or, uh, you know, there was a, a pretty significant amount of time where they, uh, where it wasn't a museum director and we just kind of took things. Um, and so it weren't documented real well, so. Right, yeah. yeah. Some of the stuff really doesn't have anything to do with the Adobe house. No, I don't think. You know. Well, and if you look at like uh, tea kettles, for example, we have ten tea kettles. Yeah, we kept probably half a dozen tea kettles. So this is Maybe they were British extra. <laughs> yeah, they could have been British tea kettles. Who knows? So, uh, and then there's just some things that we've acquired, like the hospital sterilizer. Really doesn't have any right. historical value. It's something we've acquired. I didn't so, realize that had many stuffed birds or yeah. Texting birds and natural history. Here. Yeah, we're kind of turned into that too. Yeah. <laughs> like a Need a three headed cow. Yeah. <laughs> <clears throat> Any questions? Any concerns? Would the council prefer to go to uh, go through all these items no. line by line? I read them. Okay, good. I read them too. Okay, yeah. very good. Yeah, because I just wanted to see if there's something I might want. That's what I did too. <laughs> You can come to the auction. Yeah, yeah, the the men working sign would be perfect for our dealership. So uh, uh, working, men working, actually, no, men working. Are the women working too. There, yeah, yes. people working. Any other questions or comments? Hearing none, I'd accept a motion to approve the list of items as submitted for the auction. I so move. Councilman Lowen moves. Is there a second? Oh, yeah. Councilman McCarty seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carried. Okay, we now move on to ARPA funding, Mr. Stiles. Thank you, sir. So we've gotten the final rule from the Treasury Department regarding the ARPA funding, and um, they've made things a lot simpler. I think mostly for their own benefit because they gave money to pretty much every jurisdiction. Uh, and so the, the, what they've done is created something called a standard allowance, uh, which is a $10 million cap. Um, and if you do that, you basically can use uh, the ARPA money for your standard operating governmental purposes is essentially what it is. The only real caveat in that that we have found is that uh, you can't really purchase any equipment over $5,000 or it becomes property of the federal government. Um, and so I don't think you really want to get into that particular situation. Um, but one of the big 
bonuses for us with the standard allowance is that the, the record keeping or the reporting, I guess I should say the record keeping is the same essentially, but uh, the reporting goes down to a very simplified version of what they had before um, for what they were gonna have for us. So uh, what I would recommend doing um, if, if you're wanting to, to use this money, we can obviously use it for the same purposes we've talked about before. Uh, but I would think that moving this into our capital improvements fund uh, would be a good use for this money um, so that we could do different projects with it. And you know, we've talked about the demolition of 128 South Main, for example, using that as best some of the funding for that. Um, we're actually going to get $429,747.38. Uh, right now, we just have the first half of that. The second half should come in June. Um, you know, so I, I think the best use of that would be for the capital improvement fund. Uh, you don't, I don't really feel like it's a great idea to put it into the operational side of things. Uh, you, you run into some situations where that, that's a one-time cash infusion. So you don't wanna make commitments against that that are gonna be ongoing. Um, so just some, some food for thought. We had the, the new standard or the new standard allowance thing came out, I think after, well, just, just before our last meeting. And so we've just had some time to digest that now. So if that's the direction you'd want to go, uh, we would look for some kind of guidance from you on that. There is no, no need to act right now if you don't want to either. If you wanna think about it some more, uh, we have until I think 2024 to spend all of the money. So that is, that is an option as well. But, uh, we're recommending from the staff perspective, moving it into the capital improvement fund. If the council were to take action, what would that action be? Uh, well, we would want to direct that those funds um, be used for revenue replacement under the standard allowance as stated in the treasury department's final rules for the American Rescue Plan Act which is a mouthful, but sure. I think it's important that we note it's under the final rules and we're using the standard allowance. Council, what's your preference? Whatever you said. So you, is that a motion? <laughs> yeah, that's a motion. Yeah. Okay, is there a second? <laughs> second. Okay, we have a motion and a second. Is there a way you got that written down? Um, yes, it's just as stated on the recommendation in there. It says, um, motion to direct the funds to be used for revenue replacement under the standard allowance as stated in the Treasury Department's final rules for the American Rescue Plan Act. So this does not reflect the capital improvement. This only reflects that it will be for revenue replacement yeah. at this time. You did a good job. I didn't want to. I had to remember, but I didn't know. About sure. <laughs> <laughs> okay, we have a motion and a second. Or I'm sorry, I didn't catch the second. Second, was Thank Councilman you. Lawn. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Action this day. Um, now this might be timely uh, since the meeting's going right along, but uh, the public, uh, Community Plaza bathroom proposal, Mr. Stiles. Thank you, sir. Uh, so as we talked about, and uh, we're, Dale actually brought this up to you, the Community Plaza project. So um, our city crews are gonna be doing the installation of the spray park stuff. Uh, well, the spray park itself, I guess you should say, not stuff. Uh, we have purchased that using funds that the, has been have been raised privately. And then we'll use the remainder of the funds to work on the site, install the, you know, the equipment, do the concrete work, uh, we have about 70000 left there. I think that should be fairly close to what it's going to cost, but I'm not 100% sure at this point yet. Um, we're still kind of working on that. Uh, but one of the things in there that we, we need to look at doing also is the um, uh, bathroom project. And so we've been out looking for restroom proposals for this. Um, what we've got back, you've got a copy of there. It's a block building. Uh, it's got HVAC for year-round operation. The intent is to make this thing as durable and low maintenance as possible because we don't want to mess with that. Um, so the cost estimate that we got back was 153,000. I found that online. Yep. I think that's approximately pretty what it similar. Would look like. 
it's pretty similar Metal type roof. of construction, yeah. Um, 153,281. Um, so if you want to, you know, normally we kind of two-step this, but if we're interested in, in going forward with this, if you wanted to use, for example, ARPA money to do this, that would be in the capital improvement fund. Um, and I think would be an acceptable use for that. If we we're going to move forward, the lead time on the HVAC is eight to 10 weeks already. So uh, if we were going to build it yet this year, we would want to look at doing that, at least ordering that part right now. Um, so that would be, we'd be basically taking on that part of the project as the city. Um, we do have a donor who is interested in helping with this project. I talked to him this morning a little bit. Um, you know, I think it kind of depends on what the it depends on what happens with the, the council choosing uh, if they want to do the fund the bathrooms particularly uh, with with ARPA money in this case. Um, I think they're they're interested in doing kind of a challenge grant thing uh, where they would put up some money and challenge the community to raise their additional the same amount. Uh, and so obviously that takes time um, if that's something that they want to to do. So uh, you know that's where that particular piece of it is. Um, so if, you know, if it's something that we want to continue doing and we want to do this this summer, uh, which I think it would be a great addition to the, to the park, you need the spray park, the spray park really needs a bathroom. Um, this is really the time to, to make a move on it. So uh, if you're wanting to, to move forward with completing that initial phase, of the community plaza, if that's a priority for this group, then we're going to, I would recommend moving forward with installation of the bathroom facility. Um, there's a lot of changing prices, things moving really quickly. So uh, what could cost us 153,000 today could be more tomorrow. So, um, you know, that's, that's just what it is. And, I, you know, if, if that's the way you want to proceed, then I'd recommend, you know, proving them not to exceed amount. Uh, I know 190,000 sounds insane when it's 153,000, but I really don't know what we're looking at construction wise. When might that be finished as that gets approved? Yeah, if, if it was to get approved, I think we'd have it in, in the middle of the summer. Um, the bathroom. Bathroom, bathroom, bathroom park, yeah. The spring yeah. park's going to go ahead. It's going to be, it's moving forward now. So, you know, we're working on that. We cut down trees the other day. So, you know, that process is, is going and you know, we're hoping to get that done by early summer. That would be a big asset for what's coming up. Yeah. Yeah, and the idea of having it be year round is that we'd use it for things like the uh, arts and crafts fair, right. where we always need more restrooms. Do, yes. Um, yeah, so it'd be a nice piece. And then if you look at the, the plan that I submitted in there, this is the site plan on the what would be the north side, which would be the right hand side of this print. Uh, we've got a stage in there as, as kind of the last phase of that project. Um, so it's kind of a natural amphitheater, and it would be. Uh, you'd have, you know, outdoor, we, we kind of called it an outdoor classroom type thing where we can do, you know, different types of educational things. We could also do entertainment, concerts. Uh, we've talked about having a big screen in there so that we could show sporting events, taper sporting events, high school sporting events, stream that stuff and have kind of watch parties. So uh, it's, it's a really cool project. And, uh, you know, I think it's a worthy thing. We've got it in our strategic plan to, to get it finished and wrapped up. Um, and so now that we've We've, we've got potentially some money there from the ARPA money that we weren't necessarily expecting. Uh, I think that would be a good candidate to move this thing forward. Pretty neat from us. Well, the recommendation is to, uh, to approve the uh, bathroom project with a not to exceed amount of $190,000. Okay, we have a motion. Is there a second? We'll second that. We have Councilman By seconding the motion. Is there any further con conversation or discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Uh -huh. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries and that's uh, with much appreciation on my part. Um, this is a project that's been near and dear to my heart for a long time. And, and uh, we've been working on this thing for many years. And uh, it's, it's exciting to see that we're getting this close to actually making it a reality. And, uh, you know, I think, as I think about the progression of this, you know, that challenge mm -hmm. grant and some of that other stuff could help us fund those final phases of it. And that would be very, I think, very appropriate. 
for the stage and screen and some of those kind of things. So it'd be a benefit to the city. That's why mm -hmm. I like the project. I mean, that's cool. Yeah, I think it'll be a really a, a nice gathering point downtown, bring a lot more people. Yes, will. <clears throat> okay, thank you very much. <coughs> now moving on to uh, uh, item six, which is planning commission recommendation on alternative construction housing zoning overlay. Mr. Stiles. Okay, thank you, sir. So the planning commission has been working pretty diligently since we put that 60 day moratorium on uh, shipping container homes. Um, and so what we've, we've kind of worked out uh, was to have at the March 31 planning commission meeting, they finalized a recommendation for what's called an alternative construction house, housing zoning overlay. Uh, so not to get too deep in the weeds as to what that is, but it basically means that you can uh, apply for this, put it over the top of an existing residential place, and then uh, different rules apply if you're going to do different types of construction. So it's not just shipping containers, but it would also be uh, barn dominiums, you know, taking a pole shed and turning it into a house, um, using uh, straw bales as, as a construction material, which is a popular thing to do, um, all, you know, geodesic domes, you name it, it could potentially be an alternative housing. Um, but this gives us a, a method to, to review all of that before it goes in. Um, if it's something that's it's unusual or alternative as defined by the code, uh, then it would it have to fall into this AH district. Um, so we, we had a meeting when you could, I, I put the link into the meeting so you could actually watch the video. Um, so, it, you know, what to what we would have to do and what the planning commission's already started is to set a public hearing uh, for hearing this zoning overlay, uh, which there's a notification piece that works exactly like you would do any other kind of uh, notifications for the zoning change. Uh, so in order to do that, they've got a, they're set a planning, a planning commission has set a public hearing for the end of April. And we'll have a notification period in there, uh, 20, 20 days, and you have to publish the newspaper. Uh, and so they're going to have a public hearing for that and then make a, a recommendation to the city council for action. Um, and so what, what we need from you guys or what, what the recommendation, I guess, from the council is, is to consider extending the moratorium until the process is completed. Uh, there's a little bit of a, a process here in order to make a zoning regulation change like this. Um, so that's, that's what the Planning Commission is formally requesting, is that the moratorium stay in place until the issue can be settled, which would require more time to do it. So do they, do they know about how long the moratorium would need to stay in effect? Yeah, if, if everything went according to the calendar, uh, you would have this in front of you on May 2nd. So the motion would need to be that we would extend the moratorium until May 2nd? I would extend it until you get a, a recommendation from the planning commission in case something doesn't go right with the publication or you know, the public hearing doesn't come Leave it in. a little open-ended. Give it a little open-ended so we can actually get it. Okay. I think that uh, it would be also fair to, uh, if you haven't, if you didn't watch the meeting, which I did, um, <clears throat> I think the, uh, in this case, the developer, the potential developer. I don't know that the property has been closed on yet, but uh, it continues to be, uh, we continue to be told that it's in the, in the process of sale, but it hasn't closed yet. But that individual is, is uh, expressed frustration with the process that it was taking so long and, and et cetera, et cetera. But the, um, the planning commission member said, well, would you rather have us do it right or not do it at all? Well, I agree with the planning commission. Yeah, yeah, like right. we but, are. But I just, I just wanted to make sure the council was aware, you know, that there right. is, there was a little bit of pushback from the uh, potential developer. Not saying that that needs to, needs to uh, sway your, sway your uh, decision or your deliberations at all. Well, I think we ought to let the planning commission mm -hmm. look at the unlike some places. <clears throat> okay. Sorry, I. Can't. Said the, only, the only reason I asked that was because it didn't have a date in here, so I just assumed that it was <clears throat> open-ended. Yeah, it would be a little bit open-ended there. I mean, the anticipation, if everything goes correctly, would be May 2nd. Um, 
the important thing to note, because Felix did, uh, Mr. Ramirez did note his frustration and he called me before the meeting and to note it again. Um, the thing with this is if we put this in place before you can get a building permit, you would have to go through the new zoning process that would be happening that would be attached here. Um, so, you know, under that scenario, I think it, you know, everything could be complete in early August for him to actually break ground and do something. So, I mean, it's it's going to be a delay longer. If, I hope if, we understand uh, why we're doing it. So. Well, I think so. And I, I think, as the mayor said at the planning commission, they were pretty clear, like, you know, the options were to ban this outright or to go through right. the process correctly. So, um, you know, it's kind of a take it or leave it sort of scenario for them. Mm -hmm. Is that what you're supposed to look like? Or was it, you sent some pictures along. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this was what was presented at the meeting, or what Mr. Ramirez brought to the meeting. So there's a 3D rendering of what one of the uh, container homes would look like. Uh, and there's actually two sides of that. And then there's a four, uh, four, four plan, excuse me, for mm -hmm. one. Um, so you can kind of see what that looks like, too. Uh, was the square footage on here? It should be on here somewhere. What's 600, 640 square feet, I think is what it was. I actually so, looked at that in the picture. Yeah. I think it looks better than the ones that are sitting on the blocks. Mm -hmm. I mean, well, I mean, you got to consider that because the people down there aren't real happy about mm -hmm. sure. having something on blocks up there, and I can't say I blame you. Know, it just doesn't look too bad here. <clears throat> so, uh, just to uh, recap, uh, if I could, the uh, recommendation by staff is that uh, they recommend that <clears throat> we extend the council, extends the moratorium until the proposed A-H overlay district process can be completed. That would be the motion. I'm a good motion. Okay, we have a motion by Councilman McCarty. Is there a second? Councilman by seconds. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. Thank you very much. Uh, we now have a uh, item seven Ford invoices totaling $3,121.09, Mr. Stiles. Thank you, sir. So we've just got a handful of uh, replacement things here and, and work that's been done by Ford. Uh, you've got all the <clears throat> The list there of kind of where all that stuff comes from uh, police fire sewer sports complex a little bit of everything this time so uh total is three thousand one hundred twenty one dollars and nine cents would somebody care to make a motion to approve councilman mccarty councilman lowen seconds got that daniel okay any further discussion hearing none all those in favor say aye aye abstaining abstain uh motion Carries. <laughs> okay, now item eight, and, and I'm sorry we've had such a long agenda, Mr. Smith, but uh, we've got kind of a convoluted thing we need to fix or straighten out, or I don't know what the appropriate terminology is, but I'm going to let you walk us through it, Mr. Stiles. Yes, thank you, sir. So we proved it at, at our land bank meeting on the 15th to sell uh, Mr. Smith a a uh, lot for block four. Uh, we sent it over to the paper or to the title company. They did their review, which is what we paid them to do. Uh, and it turns out that that property wasn't included into the land bank. And so the land bank actually doesn't have the authority to sell it. Um, I, the thinking, I believe, is that a previous city attorney had, had left it out because Mr. Smith had an option to purchase it previously. And so it probably had just left that out of, of the land bank transaction because they thought that that would potentially happen. So, um, so there's three things that need to happen to fix this. Uh, first, the city council acting as the city council uh, would need to approve the proposed land bank sale uh, purchase here uh, from to Mr. Smith. The terms are the exact same as you did as the, at the land, as the land bank. Um, so the city council would approve that. And then, then the council would have to move into the land bank meeting act as the land bank board uh, and terminate the existing agreement with Mr. Smith because we can't legally do it. Uh, and then we would also want to go in and act as a land bank and approve the option agreement uh, for lot five, block four, which is what we intended to do previously. Uh, so we have to kind of 
clear this whole thing up. So uh, those are those are the things we need to do. So we're recommending right now for this action is for the city to approve this purchase contract with Mr. Smith for um, lot uh, lot four block four Philadelphia Heights. So moved. Second. We have a motion and a second. Is there any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Opposed? Motion carries. And now we are going to move into a land bank meeting. And Mr. Stiles, what action do we need to take as a land bank? Uh, you will need to approve your minutes first. Um, okay, everybody received copies of the minutes. Any questions, corrections to the minutes? Hearing none, I'd accept a motion to approve the minutes for approval. Second. We have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. Aye. Opposed? Motion carries. Minutes are approved. Next. Uh, we need to approve the agreement to terminate the real estate purchase agreement. Okay, would somebody care to make that motion? Oh. Councilman McCarty moves. Second. Councilman By seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. And now we need to approve the option agreement. Okay. And before we do this, mm -hmm. Mr. Smith, are you comfortable with everything we're doing to kind of correct the situation? I am. Again, with our apologies for uh, for the delay. Fine. Okay, so would somebody care to make the final motion? I will. Councilman McCarty moves. Second. Councilman Lowen seconds. Any further discussion? Hearing none, all those in favor say aye. 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 Motion carries. We'll now move into uh, back into uh, city council. Thank you very much. You. And again, apologies. Wait. But you know, we're gonna get it straightened oh, out. Yes, Thank get you. you on your on your way. Thank you. <laughs> mm -hmm. Okay. Next item is uh, uh, your city administrator's report, Mr. Stiles. Uh, a couple of things. One is just to mention the community garden is really starting to take off. I don't know if you've had a chance to go over there, but the kids are uh, <clears throat> fast, fast planting things, and uh, we got some signs coming in and uh, City Cruise has done a great job of getting that prepped and ready to go, and there's a lot of excitement there. So it's a it's a cool project. They're happy to have that moving forward, and I'm really excited to see what the fifth graders do with that. Um, Where's it at? It's at the museum property between oh, okay. the visitor center and the basketball courts. Um, what's that? So I've been seeing them work over there. Oh yeah, they've been busy. Yeah. They they know how to work, which is great. The garden club. Yep, the <laughs> garden club. They're here, ready to do it. Um, <laughs> task grant, which is the one we applied for through tourism for the museum projects. We did not get that, um, unfortunately, but the Bartle House has enough money raised for that project and we're meeting with a major donor on that in, uh, Monday. Uh, so that one's going to move forward anyway. We were just hoping to be able to use some grant money to help with that project and we didn't win that one. So that's unfortunate. Uh, the base grant, which is the fire station grant, that has not been uh, announced yet. The uh, Department of Commerce had, had indicated that uh, they would be making announcements at the end of March, uh, and they, they gave themselves an extension uh, to review all those grants, even though they gave nobody an extension to submit them. Uh, <laughs> so that's kind of how that went, right? Yeah. So we hope to hear that actually here fairly quickly, maybe this, this week even, uh, potentially. So I uh, had a meeting with the Corps of Engineers and the Water Office, went really well. Uh, March 18th, we were out at the dam, uh, out at the reservoir facility and, and took a look around there. Uh, we're gonna continue working with KDHE. I think we can get 100% uh, loan forgiveness for emerging contaminants to do some, some work on our incoming water from the reservoir to mm -hmm. handle the iron and manganese and also the uh, algae algae issue. So uh, liability insurance, we've, we've got our renewal uh, with EMC. They're kind of finalizing some of that. So a couple things we added to the policies, the large water tower for whatever reason wasn't in there. Um, it is now. And so we're insuring that. And then also we added uh, enhanced cybersecurity insurance coverage. It wasn't very expensive. And that's the one that makes me the most nervous right now. Um, and so we did that. Total proposed amount is 155,457. That might change a little bit slightly. Um, that's about a 13 percent, 13 and a half percent increase from last year, but that has to do with uh, EMC increasing all property insurance by about 13 and a half percent. So really, 
from that perspective, we all the changes we made kind of kept us pretty well flat, and we just kind of got what we what we would normally see. Um, and we're also in the process of getting one a quote again from Midwest Public Risk, so you'll see that coming up here shortly as well. Uh, health insurance renewals coming up. We'll have that in the next few months. We're looking at potentially being in the KMIT health insurance pool. It's a new thing that KMIT's been working on. Um, if that makes sense for us, we'll be looking at those rates too. And then you've got the financial report there. Uh, we've got the financial report through February, end of February. Um, and we're, we're working on getting March uh, tied up for you. Uh, and then the sales tax, sales tax tracking charts there actually continue to do really well. We're about 20% above last year uh, and 30% above the rolling average for five years. So everything continues to keep moving on that in a positive direction. Very happy about that. Uh, last thing is the demolition of 128 South Main. They were saying originally it would be finished in the middle half of April. It looks like now it's going to be the first part of May. So a little bit of delay there. But That's due to the remediation. Remediation part, yeah. So we're still moving forward. That's all I have, sir. Any questions? All right. Now we're on our final public comment section. Uh, is there anybody from the public that would like to comment? We have, uh, looks like one member, mm -hmm. Rod Funk online. Um, everybody in here looks to be in good shape. All right. Okay. Now move on to council comments. Councilman Bai. Not today. Councilman McCarty. Uh, the other day I had a couple of people talk to me and they wanted <coughs> to thank the study for the trail. And they said they would really be happy if it was extended some. And like Dale was talking about, and also in the loop, they said everybody that talked to really thought that was a really good deal for Hill. Mm -hmm. so it's used. Yeah, it's used a lot. Yeah. Okay, Councilman Lowen. No comments. Okay. All right. Is there any other business that needs to come before the city council? Hearing none, meeting is adjourned. Thank you very much. Appreciate everybody's participation.